Well, I come before you all today because I'm a little, my heart is, is grieved. Whew. I hear one particular word coming from the Lord and I hear it ringing in my ears over and over. And that word is out of order. And um, yeah, my spirit is really grieved right now because the church, the body of Christ as a whole, I'm not talking about one particular church. I'm, I, I mean, the body of Christ as a whole is out of order. What is your focus and your attention on? Are you really seeking God and hearing God's voice on what it is that he wants for this season, what direction the body of Christ should be going in, and the, what direction should the body of Christ be taking, because we keep trying to revert back to the old way of doing things, and God, we should know by now in what we are experiencing and going through that we cannot enter into the next doing the same things that we did before. We cannot. We have been forced to um, go into the social media arena. We have been forced to go into the cyber world. Now, prophets, those that are prophets, those that speak, those that hear the voice of God, that um, speak on behalf of God in hearing his voice and interceding, um, they have been speaking and saying that we need to come outside of the church walls, come outside of the building and reaching the people. You know, I had a mandate years ago. I started doing videos many years ago. I started doing videos almost six years ago. Maybe it is. I have videos from maybe six years ago in which I, uh, the Lord <clears throat> placed upon my heart to give an encouraging um, word via video and online and um it's just so many people that will not ever come into the church building that can be reached that way and so as i present myself before you all today and i and i am telling you that i'm hearing this word over and over out of order and that my spirit is grieved i wanted to know god why why are you, why am I feeling this way? And why is this so heavy on me right now? And the next thing that came to me was about fathers. Oh Lord, our family. And how the body of Christ should be connecting families and supporting fathers and building up the household. Because we know and I continue to say it over and over again that the devil does not come, that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to, to kill, steal, and destroy. He goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he is seeking to devour your, your family. He is seeking to devour the head of the household. He is seeking to devour the matri uh, the patriarchal spirit. And it all goes back to what is the domineering, dominating spirit over America today. The dominating spirit over the United States today which is the De Jezebel spirit, the spirit, the controlling spirit, the seducing spirit. Oh, Rabbi Kashi, God help somebody today. God is ready to bring that spirit down. It, Lord, have your way, Father God. Have your way, dear Lord. God is ready to bring that spirit to a halt. And it is a 
affecting the body of Christ. It is affecting the churches. It is affecting you and you don't even realize that it is affecting you. This spirit and this witchcraft, anything that has to do with rebellion, anything that has to do with control is witchcraft. I declare and I decree that the blood of Jesus is against you. You shall not have our children. You shall not have our families. Our children are suffering because people will not stand up and take their rightful place in the body of Christ. They are uh, uh, self-righteous, self-agendered, that they are not getting in the place of hearing the voice of God. I said it, and I'm going to say it because this is what I'm hearing from the Lord. Too many of us is sugarcoating things. We're sitting up here and pretending like there is no issue. Let's just go about business as normal. Business is not as normal. The kingdom of God is at hand. Can you hear the voice of the Lord say, repent, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand? Let me tell you. I said, God, what do you mean? He said, the man, the father is supposed to be the head of the household. When I created the earth in the beginning, in the beginning, when he created the earth and he created man on earth, he created man first. He created male first. Then he created female and told them to go forth and multiply. That became the first family. God designed marriage. God designed family. The man was to be the head of the house. The Bible says a man that does not take care of his house is worse than the infidel. The lowest, the lowest, infidel is the lowest thing on earth, the lowest of lowest. Oh, Rabakashi Siadaka. Listen, body of Christ, what are you doing to help to help build up the, the, the family structure? To help men of God, where are you? We have gotten to the place where we make it seem like being a man of God and worshiping and praising God is assist, is um oh Lord help me Jesus is not masculine. I think that it is the most attractive thing in the world to see a man praying a man worshiping God, a man that loves God, because if he loves God and he's receiving the love of God, then he's going to love his wife. He's going to love his children as the Bible says, to love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. How can you love somebody like that when you, don't, when you haven't had that experience of that love? Church, what are we doing? Body of Christ, what are we doing? We're out of order. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing the voice of God? What's most important to you? What is it that you're driving and, and you're pushing when you do your messages, when you do your sermons, when you create your programs, when you put in things together, building faith, faith is good. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of of things not seen. Faith without works is dead. But daddy, man of God, the father, you, man, that's that's producing children out here and have these women taking care of children and, and creating women that are dominant because they have to be independent. So then they become not only independent, but they become domineering women. Women that do not know how to be, uh, do not know how to be, uh, oh Lord, help me, um, submissive. Women that think that if they are submissive to the man, then they are um, being weak. That women that, that buck up against them and say, oh, you're not going to tell me what to do. You're not going to. That's not of God. 
that's not of God. The woman is supposed to be the backbone of her husband to gird her husband up, to pray for him, to pray and bring forth. She is the incubator. When he has a vision and he has dreams, she take his vision, she tra takes his dreams, and she began to incubate that thing, put it, it's like a seed on the inside of her, and she pray over it, she cultivate it, and she um, nourishes it. She put the word of God on it until it's birth, and it comes to life. Are we teaching that? Are we showing our young women how to how to pray for their husbands? I had to learn a lot of stuff, and a lot of stuff I had to learn the hard way. Sometimes we allow um, um, men and women to get married too soon. We okay? I got a cure. I got a cure for for for. Um, I got a cure for. Um, what is it? Planned Parenthood. You know, that y'all talk about um, um, pro-choice and abortion and all that stuff. Just don't have sex. Just teach people abstinence. If you're not going to take care of the child, don't just don't have sex. And listen, 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 listen. I am a mother of four of five of five children that I birthed out of my body. I am not a perfect person and I've made some mistakes, but because I have been down the road, I fell in a couple of ditches. This is not my first marriage, my second marriage. God is working. God has taken, taken those things that I erred in and allowing me to tell you, Susan, there's a ditch right there. Don't fall in that ditch. Johnny, don't fall in that ditch. Oh, come on, Tom, it's a ditch right there. I'm telling you, it's a ditch. I see it. You about to fall in that ditch. Don't fall in that ditch right there. My son will tell you, I tell him all the time, look, you getting ready to fall right in that ditch. It's a ditch right there. You going down the wrong path. That ditch, you right there, baby. You right here. You right here. You right at the ditch. Trust me, trust and believe he did not listen to me and fell right in the ditch. I'm only going to help you climb out of it so many times until I say, baby, I gave you the tools and the skills. I gave you the wisdom and the knowledge to not get fall in a ditch. Not only did I give you the wisdom and knowledge not to fall in a ditch, now I, I gave you the wisdom and the knowledge how to climb out of the ditch. I got a son now in the ditch. And he's and he's almost 30 years old. And I'm I can't help you climb out of that ditch outside of this is what I can give you. What I know, my knowledge and my wisdom. This is what you need to do to climb yourself up out of that ditch. A lot of it you already know. A lot of the reason why we in the positions that we are in is because of the choices and decisions we make. Not somebody else, but we made them. But there are some choices and decisions that we have no control over. We have no control over if daddy is going to stay with our mama. We have no control. Oh, listen, our children become adults. The children that you are not paying attention to because you come first become adults. A lot, let me, I'm getting ready to show you some, uh, tell you some statistics that are very powerful. And why am I speaking to like this is because the, God is so passionate for his children. The word of God says that the children are the inheritance, heritage of the Lord. Inheritance, inheritance. They are a blessing to us. They are a gift to us. And our children do not choose to be here. It's not a choice. And I truly believe that everyone that is born is born and created for a reason and a purpose.
but we have children that are now feeling unwanted. They're feeling the spirit of rejection. They are feeling oppressed, depressed. They're wanting to take their lives. They don't know which way to go, which way to turn. They don't know how to respect themselves and respect their body. They think that the way that they're living their life is respecting their body and respecting themselves. Because where are the body of Christ to tell them, no, sweetheart, that's not okay. No, honey, that is not ladylike. That is not appropriate. No, son, you cannot talk to your kid's mother like that. You definitely, you, you, you sneak in and you do that not around me because I know, I know you're not going to be bold enough to talk to your baby mother like that in front of me. It's not okay. If I ever, and I can't, you know, you're a grown person. Don't, don't do that. If you have enough nerve to respect, you, you respect me. You don't want anyone to disrespect me. And if they disrespected me in front of you, you're ready to fight. But you're doing the exact same thing that you don't want someone to do to me, to somebody else, else's daughter. Uh-uh. That's not okay. That's not okay. How do we make this adjustment? How do we make the change? And I truly believe that the body of Christ plays a huge part in this. Why is the kingdom, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God. If we, we, ha we need the spirit of God in our lives. You can't call your baby's mother a bee and you got the spirit of God on the inside of you. Something not right with that picture if it's true, if that's what you're doing. Hold up, listen to this. 2017 U.S. Census Bureau reported that 1.9 million children live without a father in the home. 1.9, this was in 2017. This is not even right now. This is 2020. This was like three years ago. 1.9 million children. Daddies, where are you? Father, where are you? And then, and then what do we need to do to strengthen you, to empower you? I was also reading an article from the National Center for Fathering at fathers.com that was saying that most fathers who end up fathering children want to be a father to their children, but they lack the resources in order to do that, or they don't have a great relationship with the family, the mother or the mother's family. We, what are you doing? Body of Christ is out of order. Let's, what are you doing? What programs are you providing to help keep the family unit together? The devil will come against the head. The devil will come against the head. Just The devil comes against the head in our churches. The devil will attack the pastor because if the devil could get to the pastor, it's going to destroy the whole church and the flock. If the devil can destroy the man with the head of the household, the groom, he can destroy the whole family structure. Unity is power. So much is power and unity and agreement. Whatever the devil will do, whatever he can to destroy the power of agreement and unity. We are to be wise. We are to be watchful, discerning, that this, and knowing that this is not a physical fight. That this is not um, Susan against David and David against Susan kind of fight. This is a spiritual fight. 
So when he started going off and acting weird and strange, <laughs> you know, you know, what do you do? Do you start cussing him out back and y'all just arguing and cussing and fussing back and forth and the kids that sitting right there watching you and you creating um, uh, dysfunctional children because they see you arguing and they see you fighting in front of them. They miserable, don't want to be home. All mama and daddy do is argue. Come, Don't do that. Don't do that. And what can we do? as the body of Christ to bring harmony to your life. To, you know, not be in the household where there's strife and division and to learn how to have a healthy and sound relationship with your kid's father or your kid's mother. And then how we are going to constantly work together to keep marriages um, together and solidify. To teach these young men that they can be happy and love one woman and vice versa. Let me read something else to you. In almost every social issue facing America, we can connect it to a father factor. We can connect it to not having a father in the household or a father being absent or a father not being, uh, or the child not having a great relationship with the father. Almost every social issue or problem that is um, America is facing within relationships can be tied to a father issue. Listen, 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. That's, that's above average. That's above average. This is from the National Center for Father and Father, for uh, the National Center for Fathering at fathers.com. 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. Just recently, oh God, Lord help. Just recently, I had been interceding for at least three millennials that wanted to take their lives. And one took his life because the he was in a biracial relationship and the family did not want his their daughter with a black man. And he loved her so much, he couldn't take it that they rejected him and told her she could not be with him because they were not going to have biracial children. I mean, it was this horrible. He committed suicide. It was so, this, it, this, it was close. People within our um, stream of, of, of uh, church connection, our ministry, praying for this family, interceding for this family. And Jesus said before on the last day that he had supper with the 12 disciples and washed their feet. He washed their feet. And he says, these things that I do to you, I want you to do to others. I want you to love God and love others. To love. Is that hard? It's, why is it so hard to love? To show compassion. Listen, listen, listen. 90% of all homeless and runaway children are from fatherless homes.
90%. You talking about above average? 90%? Ooh, Jesus. Okay, here. Here's another one, another one that's going to get you. 80% of rapists with anger problems come from father's home, fatherless homes. This is nine times the average. Jesus, nine times the average. This is reported from the National Principals Association. 80% of rapists with anger problems come from fatherless homes. Can we do something to change this? Can we, what? I looked at my grandchildren today. I looked at my grandchildren, my other set of grandchildren last week. And I said, Jesus, this is our next generation. They're so smart, so intelligent. But I got some grandsons that's angry. They fight. That's like chose not to do. I'm not doing my schoolwork. Why are you failing? Mm -hmm. Just not sure. Like, mm -hmm. Why you didn't do your school? Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not okay. They daddy is there. But it's a lot of strife. It's a lot of division going on in the house. So now I'm trying to pour out love as much as I can. My daughter trying to be the auntie and pour out love as much as she can. I'm in the, in, in the prayer closet praying. And so they may not see me because <laughs> I'm in the background and I'm interceding and covering and praying and covering and praying. Come on, church. Let's make the crooked places straight. Fathers arise. Daddy, where are you? We have daughters out here. Did you did you know that a, a lot of the um the I don't have the statistics right here before me regarding um, young girls that get pregnant uh, early and teen parents. But again, I was reading it and the percentage is once again above average and it is a result of father issues. And I'm not saying that daddy's, you know, me and you don't want to take care of your kids. That's not what Tedra's saying. I'm not saying that. I'm asking you, and I'm asking the body of Christ to seek God arise. And, and you know, you're creating programs. You, 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 you're trying to go, you, you got people coming and trying to get people back in the church building. You know, wh what can we do to build a strong family structure and foundation? What are we doing to prepare people for, for kingdom principles, to get them into the house of God, to get them into that Zoe life, to get them into this, this, the life that God has promised unto us and to receive eternal life, to receive wisdom and guidance. We cannot continue in this world like this. God will lead you by his Holy Spirit. Even in the midst of what we go through, even in the midst of how, how do you think that our ancestors made it? How do you think they have relationship with the Lord? They would sing songs praising God while picking cotton. Lord Jesus, help us. Hear my voice. Hear the voice of the Lord. Because it's not about me. It's about our community. It's about our children. It's about the next generation. Generation, Our millennials, people going to hell thinking that they going to go, you, you could get into heaven just by being good. It's a lot of people in the church that's not going to heaven. 
Your because they're not being taught the right principle. You can't get into heaven by just being good. You can't even get into heaven by just having faith. Unless you have faith and believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. You repent of your ways. You take up your cross and walk with him. And receive the gift and the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of God says be baptized in water but also be baptized in the Holy Spirit. We need to be teaching these right principles. You can't just live your life any kind of way. It's not okay. And we got these young people coming up. They are going to be our senators, our, um, the, our leaders, our judges. How are we raising the next generation? We talk about black on black crime. We talk about, you know, people shooting one another. We are lacking the unity, the family unit and love and respect for one another. A man loving his wife, a wife respecting her husband. And it's, we got to change. We need to change. Okay. I need you all to hear the words coming out of my mouth. I need you to hear my heart. I need you to hear the heart of the Lord. What can we do? What can the body of Christ do to make the adjustments and changes? Arise. We need the patriarchal spirit to arise. We need the, pa again, I'm saying it again. We need the patriarchal spirit to arise. We need the patriarchal spirit to arise. We need the patriarchal spirit to arise. Shut down Jezebel. Shut down that controlling spirit that wants to run everything. It's not okay. And, the, and Jezebel does not arise just in women. It's, it's in men too. But it's consuming and taking over. We got to shut that thing down unless a man takes bound up the strong man. Bind up that strong man. Bind up the spirit of Baal. Let's get the family unit like this. Unbreakable, unsyllable. Raising healthy children that know how to love and experience love because they are experiencing the love of God. I love you guys. I'm out. This is Tedra Denise, your spiritual empowerment leader, human behavior consultant and author. I ask you to go forth and have a super fantastic day. Those that are watching by way of um, video, I ask you to share this video with other people. Spread the word. Love you. Love you.